Okay. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm gonna post this on the Discord that we're starting. Okay, there we go. Oblomov. I saw on uh, Discord that Oblomov invited a bunch of people to the Discord channel. It's like, I don't know, maybe 20 people were invited by Oblomov. That's a lot of people. Hello, Safari. Good evening. How are you? Let me adjust my camera thing. Maybe this is better. Okay. And Zen is saying his he doesn't want us. Zen is abandoning us. I'm joking. <clears throat> I'm good, Safer. Um, yeah, I didn't get as much done today as I wanted to because um, I had to set up some meetings for an event that I'm attending next week. I have some dropped frames on the stream but it seems to be fine now hello again how are you okay so yeah i got a meeting with paradox i mean i tried to at least uh it's actually just a Brazilian guy who works at Paradox and there's gonna be this event in Brazil and he's gonna be there so I'm gonna try to meet him I think that's gonna be nice if I can manage to set up the, that meeting if he accepts my invitation are they gonna leak Victoria Street to you? Uh, I won't confirm or deny that But hopefully, I can tell him about Historia Realis and see his opinion on it and stuff. I don't know, I think it's it would be nice to have a, some kind of relationship with Paradox. Like, they've been doing historical games for a long time now, and they make some really good games. Hello, uh, total idiot loser. Well, that's an unflattering name. Um, I seem to get, be getting dropped frames every few seconds. But it shouldn't be a huge problem. Anyway, let's get started. So, last time we were doing Latin. And we had this, ex this exercise left, which uh, you have to answer the questions. And I'm gonna put on some music before I start. I actually forgot about that. So last time we did a zero AD soundtrack. Maybe we can go back to. Oh, we did Caesar Tree soundtrack as well. Are there are there any more like? 
Roman games I'm missing? Like more recent ones? Because I know some really old ones like... There was a Hannibal game. But it was... It was like really old. I'm not sure if it even had a soundtrack or... Even if it had, it would be like... Yeah, can't find it. So what are some Roman soundtracks? Maybe HBO's Rome? I haven't done TV shows. First Paradox made Count Chris to a community ambassador. Now you're getting a meeting which represents interesting developments. Well, I'm the one initiating the, the meeting. It's not like they reached out to me. The only... The only reaching out by Paradox was that, that post by Johan, which just said no uh, when I asked if I should give up on Historia Realis. That was the only time Paradox said anything to me, and uh, this meeting I'm the one setting it up during a... It's, uh, it's called Brazil's Indie Games Festival, something like that. It's gonna happen next week, and uh, there's gonna be one guy from Paradox there, and I invited him to a meeting. So yeah, it's my it's my initiative, not theirs. So this is HBO Real Music. Let's gonna try it out. Let's try that. And uh, let me know if it's too loud or anything. Okay. We're good now. So I'm not I'm not I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk to Paradox guy about. I just hope to show him my game. Maybe he's seen it already, maybe not. And uh, just see where he goes. You know, just just talk. So, I'm d I don't... I can't actually answer this. Like, I'm not... My Latin's not good enough to come up with this. So what I'm gonna do, so I can learn from this, is I'm gonna check the answers. Oh, there's no preview for those available? It was... I was getting this from... I might have to download this instead. It's gonna take some work. Maybe I'll just do this, like, tomorrow. Oh no, there's the preview, okay. Weird. Here it is. Okay, so we were in chapter 6, I believe. What is the next one? Yeah, next one is 7. So. Chapter 6, Pensum C, Ambulatne Julius is the question, and the answer is non ambulat, lectica vehitur. So he doesn't walk, he is carried vehitur in the litter. Like to zoom in. No, I don't think this helps. Wait, okay, there we go. Qui, um, qui julium portant. Davus et ursus julium portant. So the the question is who carries Julius? 
And the answer is the two slaves, Davos and Ursus. Davos et Ursus Iulium Portant. Davos et... Lucius, was that it? I forgot his name already. Ursus. That's the funny name. Oh, it's going to be Julius, right? This is like Julium? What is it? Yep. Sure. Suffer so says Stin Accurate. Have you tried using Google Translate or Stin Accurate for you? I use like. Um, name means it's a question. Oh, that's true. Now is a question. The Vuzet Ursus Iulium Portant. So, Ganov said made Count Cristo a community ambassador. Who is Count Cristo? I, I don't actually know. For translation, I'm using. The stools, like Perseus dictionary thing, and also Wiktionary. They're both really good. <clears throat> so, yeah, they are carrying him. Crystal is a Hearts of Iron 4 YouTuber, nice. Famous mostly for beating a mod that was meant to be impossible. He won World War II as Germany starting in March of 1945. Cool. Maybe I can send him a Soria Realis when he... When his Soria Realis is playable. Like Alpha or Beta. I'm gonna watch some of his videos. Um... Count Cristo. Quid portant Cirrus et Leander? Uh, the question is what are the other slaves carrying him? And they're carrying bags, which are sucky. But uh, in the sentence, it's sacos because of the declension. So Cirrus et Leander, sacos portant. Too big. Come on. Nope. You get against if I try to maybe this way. Yep. There you go. Unde venit Julius et quo it. So where does Julius come from and where does he go? The answer is Julius Tusculo Venit et ad villam suam it. Julius ad villa villam suam it. Yep, it's because it's in the accusative. And it should also be a bit smaller to fit here. Quo it medus? Where's medus going? Medus Romam it. The other one's pretty easy, I should have tried to answer it. Because I could have done that. It diamne Cornelius Tusculo Romam it. I don't remember etiam. Do I even have that? In my dictionary? I don't think so. Etienne. Let's check that. But I've searched for it. Now two yet, as yet. Do we really not have Etienne here? 
Oh, we do. Also. Okay. So it's one of the useless words. So, and also... Or like, also. Just also. Cornelius to Scleromum eat. So, Cornelius is going from Tusculum to Rome. Tusculum. The answer here is Cornelius. Oh, is it like two choices? Etiamne, Cornelius Tusculum Romum eat. Cornelius non Tusculum Romum, sed Romum, Roma Tusculum eat. Because he's going the other way. So the the question is is he going from Tuscula to Rome? And the answer is He's going from Rome to Tusculum. Cornelius non Tusculum Romam sed Roma Tusculum it. To slow here. This is not set said. It's here. Uh, Sefer is asking in the post in uh, his developer subreddit. I noticed the recommendation that the game shouldn't be UI only. How do you plan to make the game appealing for the i2? Yeah, that, that was my post on our game dev. I asked for uh, some advice from other game developers there. Um, I, I think I'm. I think it's gonna be pretty much UI only. I'm just gonna make try to make the UI look really good. I think ideally you'd have like some art for events. You know how uh, Crusader Kings has the little art on top of events. Like when a baby is born, you get a picture of a baby and stuff. Ideally, ideally, History Realis would have that, but at least uh, in the early versions it's just not gonna have it. But maybe later. Kinda like Democracy 3. Yeah, Democracy 3 is... You know, UI, icons, that stuff. I'm just gonna try to make those really good because... I mean... I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't fully agree with that comment, like by the, the person who said that the game shouldn't be UI only. I think it's possible to have a UI only game that works really well, Except, especially considering the players. So I did that um, that poll thing, the survey, early on. I got like 400 answers on that survey. And I asked people like what was most important in a grand strategy game, like between art and uh, gameplay and audio and a bunch of other stuff. And the least important thing was the art. Uh, maybe it's not true. Like maybe players care more about the art than they think they do. But even so, they at least they don't say it, <clears throat> and I, I I'm just gonna believe the players that art's not so important uh, because this was, it's really more about the gameplay, right?
Uh, Ubi Habitat Cornelius. Where does Cornelius live? Corn Cornelius in, in Tusculum Habitat, maybe? Tusculi Habitat. Curmedus letus est. So why is Medus happy? Because he met his friend. Medus letus est quia Rome amicam habet. Because his friend lives in Rome? Or because he has a friend in Rome? Habet is to have, right? Yeah. Because he has a Roman friend or a friend in Rome? Uh, medus Letus est quia Romam amicum habit. Is that right? Amicam, because it's in the accusative. I think the art is important. Yeah, me too. Especially in historic games, it shows that it, what he should think of when these events happen. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm getting some disconnects here. Maybe my cable is a bit off. That's weird, I, I thought it was fixed. Anyway. I think the art is important as well, but it's not the most important thing. That's the thing. It's like, how important is it? Uh, is the art more important than the gameplay? Like, would you rather have um, a really well-drawn Roman or... Uh, or a really historically accurate political representation of Rome? I think the answer is obvious. But, it, you know, art is nice. If I could have great art, I'd have great art. It's just a matter of uh, what can be done realistically. I think I can, I can make the UI look good and be really readable and, and nice. Go ahead, Sefer, ask her, ask her questions. Que est Lydia? What is Que again? Is it who or... Who, where, who? So Lydia is a friend of... Um, Medus. So Lydia Amica Medum est, something like that. Lydia est Amica Medi. Sure. Or I'm pretty sure you can answer it like this as well. Feminine of quiz, quia. No, qui, what? Que, okay, yeah, que, sure. This is qui, and que is probably the, the feminine. But quia, no, quia is uh, yeah, why or because, or something like that. Quia is something else. Let's see here. Yeah, quia is because, right here. Um, I'm not sure if I understood this right, but is Story Real is a standalone game or is it a mod on top of EU Realm? It's a standalone game. I couldn't mod EU Realm to the extent that uh, that I want to to make what I want to. 
I'm gonna try to mod uh, Imperator Realm <clears throat> when that comes out. But um, Story Realms is still gonna be a standalone game because Imperator is doing something else. Imperator is a map painting game, like Johan said. It's about conquest, it's about um, foreign uh, trade and uh, relations and wars and basically expansion in the map. And History Realis is just not about that at all. Not about any of those things. History Realis is about the politics, politics of Rome and you know, being a Roman, climbing the Cursus Anorum, which is the the Roman offices and uh, making allies and enemies and rivals and having that simulation um, happen inside Rome itself and decide the the future of Rome. Imperator foreign policy, sorry, I was internal politics, yes, yeah, that's the distinction I always make, I think it's a pretty good one. That's why the map is not really important in Historia Realis. Because everything important is gonna happen in Rome, really. I think it's still gonna have a map, I'm gonna work on the map, like, later on in development. But it's mostly, uh, to be honest, the map is mostly because People just expect a map so much due to uh, Paradox games, but a map is gonna be like a, a side thing, you know, it's not gonna be the main attraction like, like it is in Imperator. Quid habit medus in saculo su? So what does Medus have in his bag? He has coins, which I forgot the word. Uh, in Saculo Su, Medus Numos. So those are the... the Numos is coins or money? In Saculo Su, Medus Numos Domini Habit. Okay. He has the money of his master because he stole it. Sunt ne amici Julius et Medus. Julius et Medus non amici sed inimici sunt. So are they friends? The uh, Julius and Medus? And they're not friends, they're enemies. Julius et medus non amici, sed inimici sunt. Suffer asks, I wouldn't even need a map, but I think expansion of the Roman Empire should be somehow visible gameplay wise. Yeah. That's why there's, there's gonna be a map, basically. <coughs> I think... I think it's gonna be, like, interesting to have a map, but it's not gonna be... I mean, it's not gonna be... gonna have many provinces and it's not gonna represent any other nation other than Rome. It's just gonna be a map of Rome, and Rome can expand. And you see that expansion on the map, but there are no other nations at all in the map. There's just provinces that Rome can expand into. It was important because it could decide elections and determine the wealth of any people. Yeah, I agree with that. Especially stuff like uh, triumphs. Plus open up new jobs, that's true. Like, uh, Marius was elected consul a bunch of times because of a threat of the Kimbri. 
you know, it was like, oh, the, Krim the Kimbri are migrating, they might attack Rome, we have to elect a strong general. So they elected Marius a bunch of times. And when he... Uh, I'm pretty sure Marius got a triumph for that, for defeating the Kimbri. And that also gives him a lot of prestige. So yeah, I mean, Roman society had a lot to do with its military expansion. But I think the map is just going to be one more aspect instead of the main aspect. The main aspect is going to be politics. The map is just a part of it. Non portat verbum passivum est. I don't, I don't even know what you're asking here. Portat non est verbum passivum, sed activum. So, to carry is to carry a passive verb. Is it not? Maybe? No. Portat non est verbum passivum, sed activum. Oops. So it's not an uh, passive verb, it's an active one to carry because you're, you know, you're carrying or not being carried. I mean, what way do you, what would I want for the map? I could draw something for you and show you what I love for this game if you want me to. Sure, Suffer, that would be nice. I do have a a mock-up of the game at the History Reality's website. That is like the main image I showed before Paradox announced. Um, before Paradox announced Imperator, I showed this image, which is my idea for the map so you can get an idea of my my idea basically but yeah if you want to add to this or change this or work on something else and show me that then sure I'm gonna I really appreciate the feedback anyway we've done half an hour of Latin we've finished the exercises even though we basically just read the answers but it's still good to learn uh, I, I understood most of it that's what matters you know learning I will just keep going with Latin next week so right now we're gonna jump right into uh, historical research we're gonna read some Plutarch fall of the Roman Republic the life of Caesar As soon as that opens... Okay. Oh, I find the, the war description so boring, to be honest. I really liked... Um, the book by Adrian Goldsworthy, which is uh, Caesar, Life of a Colossus. And I liked that book up until the campaigns in Gaul, when it became like uh, this war campaign diary, then that got really boring. I really liked like Caesar's political life up until his uh, governorship of Gaul. And then it got interesting near the end when Caesar comes back to Rome from Gaul. I guess that's why I'm Historia Realis is the way it is, right? Because I'm more interested by the political aspects of Rome than the military aspects. The military aspects to me are just like a side thing. They're not so important, they're not so interesting as the political. Maybe I'll just because uh, this is just uh, the boring stuff. 
I don't really want to read this. It's just so uh, Caesar found this tribe and they had this many soldiers. Yeah, it's like not interesting to me. I mean, especially having already read uh, Adrian Goldsworthy. I'm excited to see an event chain about Caesar's discovery of Brennan. There's that's, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but um, that's just probably not gonna happen. I'm gonna try to focus on a. Uh, emergent narrative more than a uh, railroading I think something like Caesar's discovery of Britain would be railroading maybe there can be something for the discovery of Britain period so that anyone can do that but not Caesar's in particular because that will be like I don't know that that that's like less interesting to me. I like the alternate history more than the facts. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, generally I don't like the real roading too much. The discovery of American CK2. Was, I didn't even realize there was a thing in CK2. I don't think I. I ever played it far, I guess. What is it like? Caesar forces were now so large. Yeah, still the size of army. 60,000 60, men, 7,000 men. Blah, blah, blah. And so it goes on. 170,000 men. When the numbers stop, I'm gonna keep reading. Is this here? Is this it? Yep, I guess so. Vergentorix, the supreme leader was captured and a prisoner reserved for the triumph okay I guess the war is over yeah, you got to treat the game like a game and not like a history book I, I really love history but I, I agree with with you I think um, I think you have to play history, not read history when you're when you're playing a historical game. Sefer. So Gandalf. I think if you play as a Norseman and on Iceland you can get an event when you discover America. Basically Leif Erikson's journey. Oh okay. Summarize in the text box. I'm not sure if this uh Vergentorix is related to Vercingetorix, or maybe it's the same guy and just read in a different way. But as, as to the Discovery of America event, I, I've done a... when I work... work I've made a historical game, it's called Painter's Guild. Uh, like, Painter's Guild as the, the Guild of Painters as in painting pictures and drawings and uh, stuff like that. And it's an art history game and I, I put some historical events on that game like text boxes and it, I believe that was the least interesting part of the game that was like people would get this historical event boxes and they would just uh, close them Because it's just text, right? If you want, to, if you want to read history, you can uh, read a book. 
if you're playing a game I think at least for me I, I'm not I don't find like reading historical events interesting I want to make history I want to shape history I'm not sure if I make sense if I'm making sense it's just like my view on this But I do believe something like if this can be emergent, if somehow the simulation can come up with the discovery of Britain or stuff like that, then sure. It's just not gonna be a set event on a set date with a set character. Like, oh, Caesar discovers Britain in uh, 40 BC or, or whatever. It can be like someone discovers Britain at some point in time. That's more interesting to me. Caesar had long ago decided that Pompey must be removed from his position of power, and Pompey, for that matter, had come to just do the same decision about Caesar. Crassus, who had been watching their struggle, ready to take on the winner himself, had been killed in Parthia. Yep. So that now the field was clear. The man who wanted to be on top had to get rid of the one who at present held that position. The man who was for the moment on top had, if he wished to stay there, to get rid of the man he feared before it was too late. It was only recently that Pompey had come to fear Caesar. Up until this time he had despised him. Reminds me of the challenge... challengers... Province Bonanza mod for the ET mod for U4. Since Vancouver was named after a British name, general, if you colonize it as France, it's named after a random French general in your military. Oh, that's really interesting. I really like that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's that's the kind of th of th of thing I I really enjoy. It was through his influence he thought that Caesar had grown great and it would be just as easy to put him down as it had been to raise him up. Uh, and thanks for that, uh, for mentioning that kind of, I'm gonna check out that mod. But Caesar's I think this is also interesting, like historically, how uh, Caesar, thanks to his alliance with Pompey, he became, like, really important. But then, you know, he became too important, and Pompey had to, like, fight him. But Caesar's plan had been laid down from the very beginning, like an athlete. He had, as it were, withdrawn himself from the ring and the Gallic Wars in the Gallic Wars, had undergone a course of training. In this war he had brought his army into perfect condition and had won such fame for himself that he had now reached a height where his own achievements could challenge comparison with the past successes of Pompey. Oh, thanks for the link, Yandolf. He made use, too, of every argument and circumstance that was to his advantage. Some of these were given to him by Pompey himself, some by the general state of affairs and by the collapse of good government in Rome. Here things had gone so far that candidates for office quite shamelessly bribed the electorate. I mean, I don't think I remember the Romans ever saying that there was no blo no bribes at all. It's zero is complaining about the bribes at any point in history. Actually, counting out the money in public. Oh, I guess maybe it was less public before. And the people who had received the bribes went down to the forum, not so much to vote for their benefactors as to fight for them with bows and arrows and swords and slings. Yeah, someone asked about this on Reddit, like the gangs, the mobs, the political mobs in the late Republic. 
I think that should be a thing. Often, before an election was over, the place where it had been held was stained with blood and defiled with dead bodies and the city was left with no government at all, like a ship adrift with no one to steer her. The result was that intelligent people could only be thankful if, after such a mad and stormy period, things ended in nothing worse than a monarchy. In fact, there were many people who actually ventured to, de to declare in public that there was now no other possible remedy for the disease of the state except government by one man, that this remedy was available, available from the gentlest of physicians, meaning Pompey, and ought to be taken. Ramon essay, yeah, basically. As for Pompey, so far as words went, he puts on a show of declining the honor, but in fact did more than anyone else to get himself made dictator. Cato was able to grasp the situation and persuaded the Senate to appoint Pompey as sole consul, hoping that he would be satisfied with this more legal form of monarchy and not grasp the dictatorship by force. At the same time, the Senate voted that his period of government where his provinces should be prolonged. He had two provinces, Spain and all Africa. These were governed by officers appointed by him and he maintained armies in both provinces, which he received a thousand talents a year from the treasury. That's like pretty unrepublican. Pompey monarchy. Yeah. Caesar now sent to Rome asking to be allowed to stand for a consulship and to have his own provincial commands prolonged also. At first Pompey himself did not declare him himself either way, but Marcellus and Lentulus opposed Caesar's requests. They had always hated Caesar, and they now used every means, fair or foul, to dishonor and discredit him. For instance, they took away the rights of Roman citizenship from the people of Novum Comum, which was a colony recently established by Caesar in Gaul. And Marcellus, during his consulship, had a senator from Novum Comum who had come to Rome beaten with rods. I am putting these marks on you, he said, to prove that you are not a Roman. Now go away and show them to Caesar. Okay. Yeah, maybe w the uh... anyway. However, by the time that consulship of Marcellus was over, Caesar was already in a most lavish way, making available to public figures in Rome the wealth which he had won in Gaul. He paid the enormous debts of the tribune Curio, and he gave the consul Paulus a uh, thousand five hundred talents with which he added to the beauty of the forum by building the famous basilica which was erected in place of the one known as the Fulvia. Pompey now became alarmed at the party which was forming and came into the open. Both he and his friends began to work for having Caesar replaced by a successor in his provincial command and he sent to him to ask for the return of the troops whom, whom he had lent to him for the war in Gaul. Caesar sent the soldiers back after giving each man a present of 250 drachmas. The officers who brought the troops back to Pompey publicly spread rumors about Caesar, which were in themselves neither likely nor true, but which had the effect of warping Pompey's judgment and filling him with false hopes. It was Pompey, according to these officers, who was really the idol of Caesar's army. And while Pompey, because of the festering disease of envy in Roman politics, was having some difficulty in controlling things in Rome, the army in Gaul was there, ready for him to use, and, if it once it crossed over into Italy, would immediately come over to him. So unpopular had Caesar become because of his innumerable campaigns, and so greatly was he suspected of planning to seize supreme power for himself. All this fed Pompey's vanity. On the assumption that he had nothing to fear, he took no measures for the raising of troops, 
and imagined that he was winning the war against Caesar by speeches and by resolutions of the Senate, though in fact all these resolutions meant nothing to Caesar at all. It is said that one of Caesar's centurions, who had been sent to, by him to Rome, was standing outside the Senate house, and when he was told that the Senate would not give Caesar an extension of his command, he clapped his hands on the hilt of the, his sword and said, this will give it to him all right. Um, sure. Yet the demands made by Caesar certainly looked fair enough. What he suggested was that he should lay down his arms and that Pompey should do the same thing. They should then both, as ordinary private individuals, see what favor they could find from their fellow citizens. He argued that those who wanted him to be disarmed while Pompey's own forces were stranded were simply confirming one man in the tyranny which they accused the other of aiming at. When Curio, on Caesar's behalf, put his proposals before the people, he was loudly applauded. Indeed, some people actually loaded him with garlands of flowers as though he was some victor victorious athlete. Antony too, who was a tribune, produced in front of the people a letter which he had received from Caesar on this point and, in spite of the consul's efforts to suppress it, read it aloud. In the Senate, however, Pompey's father-in-law, Scipio, proposed the motion that Caesar should be declared a public enemy if he had not laid down his arms before a certain date. And when the consuls put the question first whether Pompey should disband his troops and then whether Caesar should, only a very few senators voted for the first, pr first proposal and nearly everyone voted for the second. This is funny, I mean Plutarch is so biased against Caesar like throughout the biography but here he's basically siding with Caesar at the end of the biography which is quite interesting I, d I don't remember what was Plutarch's relationship to the uh, imperial government but it's quite quite weird how he changes his view. But when Antony once more demanded that both should lay down their commands, the Senate welcomed this proposal unanimously. Scipio, however, violently protested against it, and the consul Lentulus shouted out that in dealing with a robber, what was required was arms, not votes. So for the time being, the Senate broke up and the senators put in mourning because of this failure to come to an agreement. Okay. Soon, letters came from Caesar which were even more moderate in tone. He agreed to give up everything else, only asking for Caesopin Gaul and the Lyricum, with two legions which he should retain till he stood for his second consulship. The orator Cicero, too, had just come back from Cilicia, was working for a reconciliation and trying to make Pompey take up a less rigid attitude. And Pompey agreed to the proposals, except that he still insisted that Caesar's soldiers should be taken from him. Cicero then approached Caesar's friends and tried to arrange a compromise, by which they would agree to accept the provinces already mentioned and a force of only 6,000 soldiers. This was a figure which Pompey on his side was inclined to accept, but the consul Lentulus would not hear of it. He went out of his way to insult Antony and Curio and drove them out of the Senate in disgrace. So of his own accord he gave Caesar the best possible excuse for taking action and supplied him with excellent material for propaganda among his troops. For Caesar could now show his soldiers this distinguished man of high office in the state, who had fled from Rome in hire carts and dressed as slaves, as they had had to do in their fear when they slipped out of the city.
Caesar had with him the time no more than oh the numbers are back okay military is back Oh, Geography is back. Anyway, he gathered his army and let the die be cast, he said. And with these words, hurried to cross the river. From now on, he marched at full speed, and before dawn, he made his way into and occupied Ariminum. It is said, too, that on that night before he crossed the river, he had an unnatural dream. He dreamed that he was committing incest with his own mother. <laughs> what? Was this necessary, Plutarch? Did you really have to reveal that? Jeez. That's ancient history for you. Anyway, I guess uh, Plutarch is going to continue with the description of war. Plutarch leaves out absolutely no details, no matter the cost. Yeah, I guess so. I'm gonna include this. A lot of people said, like, that I should do. You know how I'm doing the Roman of the Week images? With, uh. I did one for Caesar, one for Cicero, Sulla, Marius. Oh wait, I haven't released Marius yet, but uh, I'm gonna do one for Caesar with the uh, Alia Yaktaist, and then I'm gonna do this quote by Plutarch on the incest th dream. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, and that's all for today. So tomorrow I'm gonna stream again at the same time. I'm gonna continue with Latin and then historical research. I mean, after reading uh, that last part, then there's just nothing, nothing else left to say, right? So see you guys tomorrow, and uh, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, guys.